So here we have a project that was shot at a very high resolution. The width of these frames is 1920. So it's a lot to ask my computer to actually try to play this footage back. If I play it back, you see the playback is very bad. I'm only getting probably two or three frames per second. The footage looks great. Really happy with that, but the playback rate is awful. I cannot edit this. So I have a system that's not really capable of editing HD video in its native resolution, as you can see here. And um, so I'm going to show you how to do an offline edit, which is a trick that the pros use. For example, when they're editing film, you got 2K, 4K frames. You know, trying to edit that in real time is not a great idea. Now, if you're editing the original quality of the footage, you're doing what's called an online edit. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do an offline edit, which is where you're editing a lower resolution version of your footage. You capture a lower resolution version of your footage, and then you edit that version. It's lower resolution, smaller frames, smaller file sizes, therefore your computer can handle it. Because you got to think about it, the reason why you're having this problem is because you have these huge files, your computer has to, uh, to, to handle so much data per second that it just can't manage. So you've got to get smaller file sizes so it's much less data so your computer can handle it. Do all your editing, everything's smooth, everything's easy, and then when you're done, you can finally do your grading or your color correction with the full resolution clips. All right, so all right, so here we have our. This is our full resolution clips. These are the original clips. So if I edit them as is, I'm going to be doing what's called an online edit. But we can't handle online editing on this current system, which is this is a Core 2 Quad system with four gigs of RAM, Windows 7, 64-bit, and I've got a black, a Western Digital black drive installed on this, and a RAID 0 array as well. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go ahead and make these clips offline. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight these clips. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose make offline. So we're going to make the footage offline. So click on that. Make sure you don't have this checked. Media files are deleted. You don't want to do that. We want to do media files remain on disk. I want these original high quality clips on the disk. I just want to make them offline. Now I want to make them offline all you're gonna have is these uh, placeholders. Now I can continue to actually edit with this. Of course there would be no point because it's all the same frame so there's not much information. But basically I've detached the link between these elements I have on my timeline and also these elements here with the actual footage on my hard drive. Now what I want to do is I want to associate these clips with the lower resolution proxies that I've created. And when I say proxies, basically it's just a lower resolution or lower version uh, of the footage that you see here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say link media. So I've detached the footage from the actual footage on the hard drive. So now I'm going to actually attach these elements here to my proxies. So I have a folder called proxies. Now very important to keep in mind, the file names are the same. The file names are exactly the same. It's a MOV file, so it's a QuickTime file, and the file name MVI underscore, everything is exactly the same. If you have different file names, different extensions, you're going to run into problems. All right, so. I'm just going to go ahead and it's asking me to link media to this file. It's looking for 8243. So 8243 is here, so I'm going to select that. Now once I select this and show it that one of these files is in this folder, it's going to automatically look for the other files in the same folder. So again, once I select this one, I'm going to say select. It's going to say, okay, cool. I see it. And now it's going to automatically search for the others. Now you can see the icons are back because we are now linked up with our proxies. So now if I go to the timeline, we can play the video back nice and smoothly because we got the low resolution proxies now. Now you notice that the the image is smaller because these are it's a smaller resolution as well. It's not just it's not just the compression, but it's also the size of the clips. I I've reduced them down to 600 by 337 pixels. So what I need to do is basically highlight all of the clips Let's highlight all the clips, right clip, scale to frame size. 
boom now we got to play back so now this I can work with it's not the best looking video but it plays back fine and it serves its purpose as far as what I need to do for editing now I used a very very high level of compression you don't have to go that far as I did I just wanted the absolute fastest performance possible but all you gotta do is find that balance of you know something that matches what your system is capable of handling so you don't necessarily have to compress it more than necessary and that's it so I can go ahead and do my edit so I go here and I uh, let's zoom in a little bit so I can go here and I can edit this slide these down slide these down slide these down so do whatever cuts you want to do and then when I'm done editing I can actually go and select clips here highlight them all and then we're gonna go ahead and do the same process in reverse make offline so we're detaching from the proxies now we need to attach the high resolution original so link media get out of the proxies folder go here take note of what file it wants me to look for it's looking for a great highway move so I'm gonna go ahead and search for that file okay so here it is select once it sees the file is there it's gonna automatically search this folder for the other clips and there you go you're all attached now back to the high resolution clips and all my editing is done so in theory what I would do now is I can just go ahead and export media and now I would actually go and render high resolution footage right now or I can do some fine tuning in here in particular I might want to do color correction now because before you saw the resolution was uh, not good for color correction. That's pretty much it.